Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm sharing how I gave my kids a quick bedroom makeover and I'm sharing the whole process with you guys today. And a huge thank you to Cricut for sponsoring this video. Later on, I'll be sharing some quick and easy projects I was able to make with Cricut to really add some personal and creative touches to this space. So any good makeover always starts with the befores, right? So this is my boys room. It is a shared bedroom. So I have two boys and they both share this room. So we have bunk beds in here for them. And like I said, if you have been here for a while, you would know we just moved into this house about two years ago and we haven't really done much with it at all. So we kind of just moved in um, and really kind of left everything as is. So it's got very white walls, um, a very kind of blah furniture. Uh, it's a little dated. It just needs a little bit of love, definitely some updating and refreshing. So my goal for this space is to give it a little bit more color, a little bit more character and make it a little bit more age appropriate for my boys. One of them is seven, so he's kind of past the baby stage. So we kind of have to have a good mix. Right now the room feels a little bit young for me, so we're really gonna kind of go through things and get rid of a lot of the baby stuff. Um, that bean bag has seen better days. It's not in terrible condition, but it just looks a little frumpy, so I definitely want to replace that and find something that feels a little bit more modern for this room. So when planning a makeover like this, I always like to start with a mood board. For me, a mood board really helps me stick with colors, a vibe, and just an overall look that you envision for a space. So for their room, I wanted to do some type of feature wall or accent wall, possibly repaint paint their bed to make it feel a little bit more new and refreshed. Also the same idea with the dresser, revamping an old piece to make it look new again. Also bringing in some new textiles, a new rug, some curtains, possibly a new chair. So with a plan in mind, now it's time to get started. So starting with the accent wall, we wanted to modernize the space a little bit by using these wooden slats. You can get them from Home Depot individually, but with the price of lumber and wood right now, it is a pretty penny to do a slat wall like that. So what we did is we ripped down some plywood for the one wall in the boys' room. We used three sheets of plywood and ripped down every piece into one and a half inch slats. The DIY slat wall was about $120 in total versus about five or $600 it would have been to buy the pieces individually. Oh, all those boards in like what, two hours? No, hour and a half? Yeah, not too bad. It was also a day to remember. It was almost 115 degrees that day, you guys. It was pretty hot. So once we got the wood slats cut down, there was a little bit of splintering. The edges were a little bit rough. So I took my sander. This was really easy. I just kind of lined all of them up on their sides, took my little hand sander. I will link this one below. I love this hand sander. It's so easy to use. And I just sanded the edges off and got all of those rough edges. Um, and made them smooth. Just so when you run your hands down it, you're not getting a ton of splinters in your hands. The plywood we used is a red oak plywood, and normally I probably would have bought the birch plywood, but they were all out of stock. So we settled for the red oak, and I think it looks really interesting. It's still a little bit warm, so it worked out well. So to attach this on the walls, we just used our nail gun. I will link the exact one we have below, and then we just kind of created this little spacer out of a piece of trim that we had, and we just used that as a spacer. You could also turn one of the slats sideways and use that as a spacer, but we wanted um, really thin lines so we kind of just created our own little spacer. For the outlets we just went around them. It was really easy. We didn't have to shut the power off. We didn't have to bring them out on top of the boards. We just kind of let them stay 
inset and that just works for us. It was easiest. Some of them look a little bit odd with the spacing, but we are not picky at all. And moving on to painting the bed. So I could have bought them a whole new bed or two separate twins, but their bunk bed, we literally just bought maybe a year and a half ago. It's still in really good condition and our boys love it so, so much. So we just are not ready to get rid of it. So I wanted to give it a little bit of a refresh, make it feel a little bit more modern. So I chose a green paint and the light on this is very deceiving. It's not, really like diarrhea green. It's more of a darker green, especially once it dries. And this was such an easy job. I just took one of the flat rollers and rolled it on. This is a little bit more true color. It's kind of a hunter olive type green. It's a really pretty, it modernizes the bed a lot. And then I did a separate color for the roof. It's kind of a charcoaly, darker grayish color. Because this dresser has two holes, I had to fill one of the holes that I would not need with wood filler. So I am just very generous with the wood filler and then sand all the excess off. And it looks like there was nothing ever there before. There were these little decorative type pieces on the side of the dresser. So I just unscrewed those and then have to give it a good hit with the hammer and they came right off. So I filled in all of those little holes and anything that looked a little bit uneven with wood filler and then sanded all the excess off and you cannot tell it looked brand new when I was completely done. And once all the dust is off, everything is clean, it's ready for paint. So I was able to paint this the same color as um, the roof for the kids bed. I kind of wanted to use similar colors but not you know, be too matchy matchy. So this was kind of a charcoaly grayish, but it does have a little bit of a green to it. So I wasn't really planning on the green. It just kind of happened that way, but it's okay. I am not picky. So I actually painted the drawers and the drawer fronts in the living room after the kids went to bed. <laughs> And then once it was all dry, I was able to add these new knobs and hardware to the fronts. And I found these on Amazon. I will link them below. They're fairly inexpensive, but they just gave it a little bit more of a modern pop and made a really nice change. I was able to use the existing holes so I didn't have to make new holes, just covering up those old ones. And I love it. I think it looks so pretty. So for the walls, I did want to do some type of new paint just because what we have on there right now is a very flat white paint and it's starting to look a little dingy. So I ended up going with this Benjamin Moore color and it's called Edgecomb Gray. However, it is not gray at all. It is more of a warmer, I don't wanna say taupe because you can hardly tell a difference between white and this creamy color, but there is a difference. It's very, very subtle, but it's warm, which I really wanted for this space. So for their bedroom, I really wanted to find something to kind of personalize their space and make their beds kind of their own. So I used my Cricut Explore Air 2 and Cricut's Design Space to help me create and design exactly what I was envisioning for my boys' room. So to create a monogram pillow for each of their beds, I was able to go on Cricut Design Space, input the letter in the font that I wanted, choose the exact size that I wanted, and then it cuts it out perfectly. I just used a very simple cardstock from Cricut to create this project. It's kind of acting almost like a stencil. So once you get your cardstock all lined up on your cutting mat, you can input your cutting mat and it's time to get cutting. I really love using my Cricut for projects like this, things like letters, fonts, monograms, things that can be a little bit more difficult. Cricut takes the hard part out of it for you. It makes the job very easy. And once it's all done cutting, you can peel back your cardstock off of your mat and there is your stencil cut perfect and ready to go. I could not have done that stencil on my own or free-handed at all. That is a pretty seamless design. So once you have your stencil, you can lay out your fabric of choice. And basically what you're going to do is trace or outline your stencil or your letter onto your fabric and then flip it over and mirror it. So you want two sides on your fabric. 
I left about a one inch gap in between the two letters, if you can see that little gap there, and then I cut about two inches around the sides and left a little bit of excess space there on the sides and on the bottom part as well. So when you get all of that cut out, um, you can then flip it and it should have a front and a back side. And make sure that you have your fabric inside out. You don't want it facing the correct way yet. And there are a couple different ways you can do this. You can hand stitch this. I just hand stitch it really quick. You can use a sewing machine or you can also use the no sew heat and bond. It is just like a seam tape and it just goes on with an iron. You can find it at places like Hobby Lobby and Joann's. I left one small side open and then flipped it inside out or right side out, I guess you would say. And once I got all of those little corners pulled out and everything the way that it should be, it was ready for stuffing. I found this at Joann's. It is a down alternative fill. It's a little bit more of a nicer fill rather than just a polyester, but I really, really like this. It's really soft and kind of gives a little bit more of a nicer fill and it's pretty inexpensive as well. And once that was completely stuffed and full, I just sewed that little seam right back up and it was ready to go. Another way I was able to organize their space was to use my Cricut machine to help with labeling. Using Cricut Design Space, I input the words in the correct size that I needed. And using the Cricut Premium Vinyl, this is the removable kind, which is perfect for labels. So you can take them off, change them out without any residue at all. I hit that little Cricut logo and then it starts cutting out your logos. And what I love about it is it looks so perfect. It is seamless and clean, which is exactly what I am looking for with labeling and organization. Using the weeding tool, it makes it so easy to pick that little vinyl sticker right up off of your letters. And then you pop out the little centers. Then using the Cricut transfer tape, you just lay that right on very flat and then transfer your tape onto your label. Make sure that it sticks really well and it is perfect. What I love about Cricut is there are so many different ways to utilize this in my home. Whether you're a seasoned crafter or you just like organization, labeling, or personalizing gifts and things like that, there are so many different project ideas. Don't forget to check out Cricut.com and happy crafting. So this is my go-to for a drapery rod for curtains in their room. They were definitely overdue. They had sheets in there before. So this is my go-to for a drapery rod. They're Home Depot, they're simple, they're matte black, and they're always easy to find. And my favorite curtains, I use them everywhere in the house. These are the Aruba curtains from Target. I will link them below. And these are actually in the brown linen color. I usually go with sour cream, but I wanted a little bit more of a brownish in there. And these were perfect. If you guys missed my haul a couple weeks ago, I will link it here. This is the find of a lifetime. This is the dynamic rugs. I found this rug on clearance at Home Goods, and I knew exactly where it was going to go. Another thing we did for the boys was hang their TV on the wall. I feel like it just makes the room look a little bit more polished and a little bit more higher end when the TV is hanging on the wall. Brandon was so sweet to hang this on the wall for them. I feel like it just kind of pulled the room together, makes it a little bit higher end, a little bit more polished. And then we took down that old ceiling fan and hung a very simple light. I found this one on Amazon. I'll link it below. Keeping storage in mind, I gave Maverick these little boxes. He can put his little keepsakes in there or things that he wants to keep up away from his brother in there. And then he has his little airplane making book and this cute little faux aloe that I found at Crate and Barrel. Another favorite find of mine for their room was this little Lazy Susan acrylic style storage container for all of their art stuff. My kids are really into art, so this was perfect. And then this little acrylic block frame I found at Crate and Barrel also. So if you remember what this space looked like before, there was sheets on the windows, there was very white walls and gray paint everywhere. And now it is a modern, cool, really neat place for the kids to be and play and hang out in. That accent wall is the focal point. It is so neat and modernizes this space so much. 
what I love is that we really didn't have to do too much in buying furniture. We kind of just used what we had and a can of paint and gave things a new look without blowing a budget. They still have all of their storage, their books. We did purge a few things that weren't needed anymore, some baby items, and this room looks a little bit more grown up and age appropriate for two growing boys. This dresser went through the biggest transformation, just taking off those curvy accent pieces on the sides really gave it some clean lines and then adding the new hardware really gave it a new look. This rug is another favorite of mine. I really think that this rug was just meant for our family. It was on clearance, it was such a good deal and it is one of my favorite things in the room. I hope you guys enjoyed making over this space with me just as much as I did. It is a labor of love, no doubt, but it is a room that they love being in. They are so excited. They couldn't wait to sleep in it the first night, and I couldn't ask for much more than that. It is the sweetest thing that they're so happy with it. So I hope you found some inspiration from this video, and with that, we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.